Private Lender Podcast, Episode 71. The Private Lender Podcast quote of the day comes to us from Thomas J. Stanley, who said, If your goal is to become financially secure, you'll likely attain it. But if your motive is to make money to spend money on the good life, you're never going to make it. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. Hello, planet Earth, and to worlds beyond, greetings from the energy capital of the world in my hometown, Houston, Texas. Welcome to the Private Lender Podcast, the only place to be if you're looking for practical, no-nonsense tips and advice on becoming the bank and a successful private lender. Look, I'm here to help you step out of your comfort zone and expand your knowledge and experience in the real estate investing area. Obviously, uh, my point is, or my angle is, for you to become a private lender to other investors. And that really fits in well if you have golden handcuffs, if you have a good job, a good career, but you still have that little itch. You want to do a little something um, something different, but you're not about to just quit your job and go become the next monster rehabber on TV. Um, you know, And if, if, if that's you, then my friends, you are in the right place. My name is Keith Baker, and I'd like to welcome you to episode number 70. And today's topic is going to be geared specifically for people who have not made their first loan yet and going to walk through. It's a bit of a mindset thing. Um, I'm kind of you know, like like you. I listen to other podcasts and other things, and I try to integrate where I can. And I, I think I've found, one, my story of how I finally you know took that leap, um, hopefully it may help you. Uh, and embolden you or at least, you know, help you make up your mind. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. Or, you know, what? maybe this isn't for me because that's okay too. This isn't for everybody. This this isn't a, uh, a one size fits all. So why don't we just go ahead and just cut right into the chat. I mean, I got so much on my head right now, so much on my mind. Uh, and unfortunately for you listeners, I use this as sometimes as a bit of uh Instead of going to therapy, <laughs> I just kind of spill my guts into a microphone and just place it out on the internet, um, which may or may not be the wisest thing, but you know, hey, only time will tell. So for me, when I got into the whole private lending thing, I, I had a job that I couldn't leave. I had uh, a mortgage, you know, family, health insurance, everything. And, you know, I guess you could say, yeah, I could leave. I could, you know, quit everything and just go do it. But that probably wouldn't have been the most prudent thing. And even though I like risk, I'm, that's, I'm more risk averse than, than that. But, but I still wanted to be involved w- with real estate investing. And so, you know, I was able to go get a, a rental uh, house, um, a little bit too far away, but you all, I think you already know that story. Uh, um, but I found that private lending was with my, the job that I have and I travel. Oftentimes, the last minute, it's hard to keep appointments sometimes uh, during the day. Evenings, it's become, it becomes a little easier. But, um, you know, so for for me and having the, the, the day job that I, I traveled uh, extensively and last minute, private lending was really good because uh, usually the timelines were, were slowed down enough to where I could go inspect the property and, you know, decide if I wanted to uh, to, to make that loan or not after I did my underwriting. But I didn't get there overnight, so initially, I I reached out to a gentleman by the name of Tom Barry, who you can listen to him on episode forty three of the Private Lender Podcast. He uh, was a very successful investor looking to to get more private money, and ultimately created his own fund uh, that he that he now has. Um, but I was going to l- give my money to him, or, or you know, loan it to to the to the fund. And have him basically be the broker, for lack of a better term. And but I told him, I said, you know, that doesn't teach me anything. And he sent me a lot of documentation about how what they look for when they when they underwrite a loan, and you know, definitely go out and, and see it. 
And it was that conversation with Tom on the phone where he, you know, was really a nice guy and he talked himself out of, out of my money because, uh, and I, was, I would I will loan to Tom to, to this day, don't get me wrong, but he talked him, he talked himself out because all of a sudden I had this spark and this, you know, I want to do that. I want to learn how to do that. I want to be the bank. But it didn't happen overnight. So I kind of broke things down into a couple of categories and began to, to visualize the process of what it was going to be like. So I, I just asked everybody, I asked people like Tom, you know, people who had funds, people who were looking for private money, fl- landlords, uh, fl- flippers, rehabbers, and started walking through the process. I also went to, it's now Quest Trust, but you know, my local IR, uh, self-directed IRA custodian took all of their classes that I could and, and still do to this day. Even um, I don't go as much as I'd like, but I still try to stay on top of things. And, you know, Laws change, this and that. It's good to stay on top of things. Anyway, um, but that's where I started, and it was – okay, let's go start talking to, first off, it was, let's find the deal. So I started talking to people. And it's funny because as soon as you mentioned you want to be a private lender, everyone wants to know your, your terms. And I always kind of teach to not focus on that. Teach people who want to use private money not to focus on that, but also private lenders because I think it really depends on each individual property, each individual deal. Now, it's good to have some numbers you can throw out just to, to hit some sticker shock on some people, you know, uh, especially if they're used to private money, I'm sorry, but hard money loans, then you, you could come in a little bit, you know, below that. But really, each each deal is its own beast, its own entity, and should be treated as such. That's my opinion. So have, you know, like my, my standard response is I charge 10%, two points up front. Rarely do I ever actually stick to those, but it's it's a way to, and like I said, it depends on, and that's somebody who knows what they're doing. They're a whale in their community and, you know, they have a reputation. I'll usually come in around the, the 10% or, you know, I'll, I'll be willing to, get, to be, become more creative with them, take less interest um, up front, no points, but maybe something on the backside. That's the beautiful thing about private lending is you can structure it any way you want. So don't fixate on what your terms are. Primarily, just ha- you know, have something in the back of your head that you can throw out that's somewhere in between the banks and the hard money lenders. And look, you know, twelve percent, eleven percent, whatever. A lot of hard money lenders are twelve percent, four points, three points. Uh, a lot of the guys that are looking for private money for the long term usually only want to pay about eight percent, no more than that, uh, if they're uh, owner financing it back out to uh, another party, so they can make a little bit of the spread on the interest. So somewhere in there, but you know, don't don't be married to it. Don't, but just have an idea. Maybe you know, say twelve percent and two points. See what they say. There's you start. We start with that. So then it was. I looked at a former document. I looked at the deed of trust of my house. I looked at the promissory note. I looked at all the closing documents of my house that I, I was living in. So I familiarized myself. It's very boring. I know, but it it, it needs to be done. Uh, but I looked at the documents. So I had the deal, the person, the deal, you know, then I had the documents. And then the rest of it was, you know, am I comfortable with this deal? Putting my money out there and I was scared. Like I probably talked to about 10 people and never committed, but flirted with the idea of loaning to them um, just to get comfortable with the idea because it was such a strange and foreign concept to me. Uh, and that's really the reason why I guess I started this podcast is so that it's that first step that, that that's the hardest, right? Um, that's what they say. And it was for me. Uh, and so in my case, um, Chris Funk came along, provided all his credentials. Everything looked good. He had a, a smoking hot deal. Um, and, and when I looked at it, I said, okay, look, let's, let's go worst case scenario. Remember I'm in insurance and risk management. So I, I tend to look at the most, you know, the maximum foreseeable loss is, um, bantied around in my in my in my world and so that's what i wanted to see what if this thing burns down yeah well there's insurance policies for that you have property policies there's you know there's and that that there are the you know, there's flood insurance if you're near the coast or a river there are ways to to mitigate so that so i had, I had the deal the smoking hot deal a credentialed in- investor i was comfortable with everything i just wanted to make sure my money was safe so property insurance and demanded that it was part of the, p- the closing documents and or, or a stipulation i should say 
uh, social security card, all this kind of stuff, all your typical stuff. But at the closing, I got, you know, I got very comfortable with what was going to happen. And then we did the deal and I didn't even have to go to the title company. I did everything from my office, uh, signed some documents, scanned them, emailed them back, and voila, I owned a promissory note on a piece of property that was, like I said, I, I really wish that he, uh, <laughs> I say, I was joking. When I loaned to Chris Funk, I say, you know, you can always, for, you know, um, not pay me and, um, you know, I'll, I'll foreclose, but I'll, I'll still lend to you because his deals are usually, usually that good. Uh, which which helps. I mean, and that 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 helps build confidence when you're when you're you're first starting off, and that's why I want you know to this show, or for this episode, how you know I had all these fears. It was my, my you know it was my money. I've never done this before. Uh, I was afraid of getting ripped off. But I just I remember laying down in the in the floor one night, and I had um, created a checklist. Maybe not. That's what I need to do for you guys. I need to create a checklist of. Things uh, you know that they need promissory note, um, ID, property description, blah blah blah. All my due diligence I had everything there, so I just closed my eyes. I laid back on the on the floor as um, a sound garden would say, in my Jesus Christ pose. I just laid out, you know, had my arms out, and I just sort of, without knowing it, visualized the process. I visualized everything that I had done. And I, then I visualized, so I guess I, in a way I kind of ran a memory bank on that. And then I, I visualized how I thought, envisioned everything would, would happen moving forward with the documents. And I, look, I messed up my documents with my uh, custodian with Quest and they had to send them back. I'd take care of it, you know, this and that. They're very, uh, they're very forgiving and understanding because they deal with people who do this for the first time quite a bit. And that I didn't visualize, but I just visualized the process of, of the paperwork I needed to fill out. And what I, the documentation that I needed to, to provide them, and then after that, it was just a matter of funding the loan, closing on it, which I wasn't there for that, but to close on it, and then to collect my monthly payments, which I did on time as agreed every month. Then Chris was able to refinance that property and get me out of it, and pay me off, made me whole, and. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, and um, you know he had that that commercial deal that was just, I mean, that was a smoking, that was just unbelievable. Um, yeah, I was like, you can default on that, but anyway, you know, I agreed to the loan, did it, and that's how I, I kept the margin of safety. So, why am I rambling all this to you? Well, because I was just like you, sitting there going, "Can I do this? What am I going to tell my wife?" You know. Um, and so for me, the, the visualizing it really, really helped out. So if you've never done this, visualize talking to an, an investor who wants your money and who is way oversold on the deal. I want you to visualize you talking to someone who you know you're not going to lend to. But what does that conversation look like? What does it look like to say no? And when they say why, what does it look like? Why? Is, it, is, it, is the loan to value too high? Do you think their 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 estimates are their numbers are out of whack with the market? You know, is it is it or is it possibly you know with me for several times it was it was I didn't like the location I didn't like the neighborhood that the property was in and I didn't have any faith uh, that it would be successful. Now I've been wrong, but you know what that's that's okay. It's all part of the learning process. But I I want you to visualize telling somebody I'm sorry no. Because if you're anything like me, you probably have a problem telling people no. And something I'm getting better at. <laughs> um, slowly but surely. It's something that I'm working on. But be prepared to say no. It's your money. You can walk away. Uh, and, you know, Being a private lender you puts you in the, really in the seat. It's not the bank's money. It's not, you're not a hard money lender. It's not somebody else's money. It's your money. So it's your control. It's your mindset, your visualization, and your say-so. So anyway, so that's one of the things I wanted to do is I want you to say no. You know, and as you walk through properties, I found to you know, poker face is really, really good thing to have as you walk through a property with an investor. Um, you know, if if you're some if there's someone who's you know like a Ray Sasser, Chris Funk, and the Landon Ross team that I you can go back and listen to them, uh, or some of the, some of the various other investors that I've had on, 
you know, there, there's, I do have a level of trust with them because of their experience, because of their, what, you know, how much they've seen and, and what they've done. And so w- w- with that level, you don't get, um, you don't get, they don't get so quite so giddy. And I've noticed that it, like the better the deal, the quieter they, they will get when people are around. So that's a little, that's a, that's a good tip off right there. If someone's real boisterous about what could be or this and that, I'm not saying don't lend, but that visualize saying no to them and get used to that fairly, fairly quickly. And that should help you, I think, get over that hump. And then when it comes to actually, you know, doing the deal, pulling the trigger, you know, if the numbers are good, and, you know, if if your underwriting says that, you know, this is something you should probably look at lending on, then I know, I know it's huge. It's a big deal. And you're going to be scared because, hell, I, I still get nervous every now and again when I, when I sign a, uh, a note, um, not because the, it's a bad deal or anything. It's just, you know, I've made mistakes. Uh, fortunately, I haven't had to pay too much for them, but, uh, there's, you know, there's a little bit, and I think it's good to have that little bit of nervous energy when you go into the deal, it keeps you on your toes, keeps you, keeps you thinking about things, uh, which is a good way, um, a good way really to drive yourself crazy paralysis analysis, but, uh, you have to be careful, but yeah, um, yeah, don't so don't visualize saying no, and also you know visualize when you're just, you're telling somebody no. Visualize stepping away. Uh, you know, I, I have had deals where everything started off looking really really good, but then you know this inspection report came back, and they're going to need more. So there's more negotiation with the owner. They're going to sorry, they need more concessions, or you know try to drive the price down, or get something out of the the current owner. And it's you can get so creative that you can work yourself out of money. And so I felt like that was happening, that everything kept changing, kept changing, kept changing. Same property, but exit strategies, you know, this and that um, were changing. And some of them I thought were viable, some of them I didn't. And so at the end of the day, I just I said, you know what, I'm, we've gone a little too, we've talked about this too much. Um, I'm going to withdraw out of the deal. I don't, mostly because I don't understand it um, intuitively. And it has changed so many times that that, I think that road just just washed away. So to recap, yeah, look, at, look, find your deal, underwrite it, visualize underwriting it. What does that look like? Okay, oh, so let's look at okay, looking up uh, on the MLS if you have access. Look at the comps. If you don't, that's okay too. There are tons and tons of free internet resources that will put you in the ballpark. Right, your your local MLS, even if you don't have access, will put you in. You can see what things are for sale. You can see now days on market is huge, uh, and that's I believe you do need a um, MLS access for that. However, you can gauge you know on a flip you can kind of see like if this house is if if houses are selling for one fifty to one sixty in the neighborhood, and somebody thinks they can get one eighty or one ninety, mm, you know you got to look at that house. You really got to see is it an apples to apples comparison and. And and in real estate, I just you know, people don't want to pay. Necessarily speaking, don't want to pay more for the nicest house in the neighborhood. They'd like to get some type of a discount. Um, so that's a lesson to all you rehabbers out there, I guess, or, or note. Maybe not a lesson, but a note from from your old buddy Keith Baker here. Um, but yeah, look at that. Look what is you know. Look at the LTV. Look at what 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 are the expectations? Hopefully, you're, it's it's going to be. And, you know, sort of like a master plan community or something that has a lot of um, homogeny, right? So it's all the same throughout. That way the the prices don't fluctuate too much. You know, some neighborhoods you have the lower end, you know, section one might be more the starter home where section four is the three fifty, four hundred, eight hundred thousand dollar home, depending on where you live. So just, you know, look at that. But visualize that. Go through everything. Visualize looking through. Go through the tax. The tax is current. Go to the uh, you know your county appraisal district. See if everything's been paid. You know, I mean, yes, the, that is all going to happen in the closing process. But it also helps you as a beginning private lender to understand every aspect of it, right? So visualize that, and then and then go do it. Due diligence. You, you, yeah, if if you don't want to do due diligence, you shouldn't be investing. Bottom line, point blank, period. So. Um, but the other thing, um, and I'm kind of rambling off. I've lost my notes. So um, the one thing I wanted to sort of wrap up the show, and it's going to take a long time to wrap up, is I want to I want to do an exercise that I, I recently uh, participated in uh, at a um, sort of a sort of a mastermind. But it 
really reverberated with what I just told you. And what they did was they had everyone stand up and you, you close your eyes. So if you're driving or on the treadmill or running, please come back to this uh, episode uh, number 70 um, and listen to this uh, listen to this exercise. So you, you, you stand up and say in front of your desk and you close your eyes and then you l- and you look to your over your right shoulder look to your right and i want you to visualize yourself but you are talking to an investor you're walking through a property a house an apartment building you're looking at a burnout you're you're listening to them talk about the project and as the private lender listen twice as much as you speak ask questions but listen twice as much as you speak i want you to visualize go through you know is there a rusty nail visualize every element of it does it smell what's the smell of the house right the property where is it what part of town is it in what does the neighborhood look like then i want you to Visualize yourself going home and getting on the computer and looking up comps, looking up prices. You know, also do some Google searches. You know, there's um, I mean, like Philip Carranza. He does. He he only his company only invests in certain parts of town because that's where the that's where things are moving to. That's where the development is going, and he's got a very nice little system and business that, where he's able to to flourish and thrive in just those those few small areas. But so Google search that. What what you know is are the schools good? That's something else you want to look at. They have good schools. I always you know sometimes I look at, at the crime reports as well. But as you're looking over your shoulder, you're imagining yourself doing this, looking at the computer. You imagine yourself contacting the uh, attorney, giving the attorney the uh, prep doc sheet with the address, legal description, price, the note, all that fun stuff. Visualize yourself walking into their office for the first time and saying, hey, this is what I want to do. You know, you know, most time you're just going to email. It's real simple. But, you know, imagine, visualize yourself talking with that attorney. And visualize after everything's said and done, whether you're doing a self-directed IRA or cash, let's just pretend and visualize that you're at the closing and you're watching everything go down. You're a fly on the wall, so to speak. Right? And then you visualize receiving that check on the first of the month, whether you go to your mailbox or you just check your online systems and accounts and then also visualize getting paid off as agreed and releasing the, the lien that your note held on that property. And when you've done that, then I want you to take one step to the right With your eyes still closed. Turn your head forward. And now you're standing in the shoes of that that visualization of you closing the deal. And now open your eyes and go do it. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time.